Hey everybody, how are you? It's Mary Bicknow. It's got a minute or two and I'm going to be doing a live training. I'm going to be doing a live training in a few minutes all about uh, how to find clients that are not on Facebook. So we're going to get started right about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, we're going to get started. And if you haven't printed out your workbook, and I'll be referring to this a little bit. Oops. I'll be referring to this. Uh, here you go. I got a workbook for you here. So print that out. There's probably some link below where you can go ahead and um, check it out. Check out the workbook. So today, hey, hey, hey guys, hey Rob. <clears throat> today what we're going to talk about, well, first of all, it's snowy here in uh, Portland, Oregon, Lake Oswego, where, and it's very rare. So a girl from the East Coast, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. As soon as we're done here, I'm going to be um, heading outside and being a snow bunny. And actually, let me, if I can get you to take a peek, here's my office, and here is my, my office. You can see the waterfall, all that stuff. But let's get back to you. So today what we're going to talk about is um, finding people, finding your perfect clients that are not on Facebook. But you know, the bottom line is this. What is your main job? Who wants to tell me what do you think your main job is as a business owner? I'll tell you what I think your main job is as a business owner. And it's really threefold. Ready? market, sell, and deliver your product, your service. So it's market, sell, and deliver your product or your service. And so if we're looking for people who are not on Facebook and the majority of the world is on Facebook, what do we do? So today I'm going to share a couple ideas with you, including um, how I've booked talks before, what I've used to do that, how I have uh, the exact script that I say to book some talks. And one of the reasons why this is such an important avenue for getting clients is frankly, okay, you ready? If, you, if you're booking yourself in front of a group of your ideal clients and you understand how you personally are able to um, close those clients or engage those clients you got a whole you got a whole room for them and it can be instant it can be instant and, and that's really one of the ways that i built my business and it kind of just exploded because i did all these live talks actually i did 11 live talks and with those 11 live talks i increased my business revenue 450 percent and it was because i was just in front of a captured audience so here we are engaging online and you know, whether you're live here or you catch this later or you sign up for the workbook, there's, there's can be sometimes that lag time, right? Where we're building that relationship as opposed to if I'm standing up in front of you and you can feel my energy and you can ask a direct question, it makes a world of difference. It makes a world of difference. Now, I know some of you are like, oh my God, I totally... Like I can't even think about doing a Facebook live or live streaming, or if I do a webinar, I want it to be all slides. The thought of standing up in front of people scares the hell out of me. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that too. What is that even, how do we get over that? But let me, let me go over some of the facts. And I guess this was, um, you know, this is right off of Facebook. The number of business pages on Facebook are 60 million. Ugh. The number of people that visit Facebook pages monthly are, of course, close to a billion because there's billions of people in the world and like most people are on Facebook. The average daily post by brands, and if you own a business, you need to start thinking yourself as a brand, right? Um, 1.48 million-ish. Percentage, percentages of small businesses, ready? They didn't say the large business, the large, you know, multi-million, billion dollar corporations. They're saying small businesses, 41%. That's a lot. Now this one, I want to, I'm going to raise my hand and who wants to raise their hand too, as far as having been guilty at times. Percentages of posts to Facebook pages that go unanswered. So that means, and I know if you go on your, your business page, 
you know, it gives you all the statistics and then over on the side it says something like, you know, how good are you at responding? And I'm going to tell you the truth, you know, over the last couple of months I've been redoing this house, this antique house that I live in, and I have not been as engaged. And clearly that that's n never a good thing. Organic reach for a Facebook page post. Ready? We know this is going down 2% you know, on and on. We could go on and on with this. But the issue is this. There's a ton of people that are on Facebook. And so that's one avenue. And I'll be teaching all kinds of other ways another time. But today, that if you grab your workbook, really, it's all about how to find people offline. Because hello, let's get real here, right? We are in this age of technology. We are in this age of creating these electronic relationships, if you will. But pre-internet, pre-Facebook, and for those of you who are old enough to remember that, like that was like in the 90s, pre, well, internet, you know, or people that were, the majority of people that were on it. Hey, hey, oh, crazy statistics, right? Crazy. Um, pre-internet, the way that we engaged in business was face-to-face. -face. And now we're all so busy that sometimes it doesn't feel realistic to do that. That's why we're going to talk about doing live talks today. So let's just go over five common ways. And let me tell you, I know that there's a lot. Yeah, 90s. I'm like, ah. Oh. I think I heard somewhere the other day that they were saying, like, like, someone said something like, you know, oh, that's an antique. I was like, really cool. That's an antique. When, when, when was that? And they're like, I think it was like 1980. I was like, shit, 1980s an antique. I mean, come on, come on. So let's talk about five common ways to find clients offline. And if you can think of other ones, please share them with me. You know, put it in the, you know, put it in the feed here because we all want to know, right? We all want to learn from each other. One is networking. Okay. There's a lot of networking groups out there, a ton of networking groups. And, and share this video, share it over everybody. Um, so there's a lot of networking groups. And why that's kind of great, remember we're going to circle back to doing live talks, why networking groups can be great for you if you are the one in the front of the room. I don't know about you, but sometimes it can feel exhausting to go to a networking group. And, and let's talk about what networking groups look like. You know, they look like meetups. They look like, um, I don't know, your chamber of commerce. They look like various business associations. Um, and what happens is it feels like you go and sure you have that face-to-face -face interaction, but sometimes that feels like it can take a long time to develop that relationship. And then I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes you feel like, oh my God, I'm paying like that 90 bucks for that chicken sandwich and everybody's in there just pitching, pitching away. Buy from me, buy from me. I'm so great. Buy from me. And it doesn't feel very, um, it, it, it's not how I want to do business. And also, you know, frankly, I'm not the kind that likes to just do little small talk. That's not who I am. I like to dive deep, get to it, let's go. I don't want to just go once a month and try and build a relationship over some conversation about your dog or your cat or whatever that like that's not how I roll and maybe for and there's plenty of people that out there who love networking and, and there's some great networking huge groups across the country that's just not one that I personally like that's not something that jazzes me hey Lisa hey Sunny so that's one way so networking again you want to be the person in front of the room you want to be the person in front of the room yeah not your thing either I know it just feels off What's another way? Referrals. Referrals are fantastic. Now, when you think about referrals, though, I want you to kind of have a different perspective about this. I want you to think about referrals. <laughs> I want you to think about referrals as the and then some, right? The and then some. Not necessarily you're building your whole business on that. Now, I know people who have built a business but you never necessarily want to have one way that you're bringing in clients. So even though today we'll be talking about offline ways, we still want to be able to um, engage in a variety of things. Okay. So one of the reasons that my business has soared and it has had these major peaks at different times is because I'm a believer in massive action. I'm a believer in creating momentum. So maybe pick one or two of these offline things, including talks, giving talks, 
and maybe it is networking and maybe it is asking for referrals but don't rely on one thing even Facebook to build your business because it's always changing and God I mean I don't know unless you're the techie lover it's exhausting to try and keep up okay so referrals by the way do you have a system for referrals we'll be talking about that another time so this is a six-week free live training today we're talking about finding clients offline I'll summarize later what the rest of the, the trainings are going to be around but systems is clear and and I'm going to give you the easiest way to make sure that your referrals can come in what are some old-school ways right newspaper ads because somebody was actually talking about a phone book the other day a phone book and I thought I don't even know the last time I was like do they even have phone books like I don't even know right um, what about casual contact so I was the other day you know because there's different there's different ideas and this is where it gets a little sticky so I'm gonna kind of walk you through this so I was I was talking to a client of mine and I was working with her team and she had brought on a new yes Don this is the first one thanks for asking and if you don't have the workbook go get it um, and I'll talk later about what the other trainings are about but she I was, so I was doing some training with her um, some marketing training with her staff and I said to one of the staff members like what do you do to help market because the way the dynamic within that business was set up when a staff member would bring in a new patient it was a, the clinic for this but a new patient they got a portion of it right it was like 50% as opposed to if the owner gave a patient to this particular practitioner it was like 30% or whatever anyhow this is my point I said what are you doing for getting you know client what are you doing in market and she's like and this is literally what she said she's like I'm doing old school I'm just whenever I'm out I talk to people and that's that's okay right thanks Lisa that's one way that we can do that just all in our casual way but God knows that is not one freaking way um, the link if you look below this video there's a place to sign up for it and you can just boom 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 it will come right to you okay um, so that's fine you know there's one piece about casually talking to people when you're out but Jesus you know I was like well who are you talking to you know, like your mom the grocery store girl like you know this is one of the things that makes owning a business or building a business exhausting is that we have to learn how to be on and off on and off and then the next layer of that is we have to really learn how to communicate what we are doing what we are selling so that you know you don't want to ever be that person in the room that they're like holy shit here comes Mary gonna sell me them insurance again or whatever it is you, we don't want that we want to have that true engagement and then frankly I want to be off there are times that I'm out in the world and I think oh she's cool I love her as a client but that I'm not putting on my like marketing hat all the time so casual contact mm, we can talk about that some more lastly this is just one and again there's so many others that I haven't listed but cold calling who remembers that who here is enough in the sales business that they're like I remember getting on the phone hi how are you this is Mary McNeil I am a you know business strategist for kick-ass business female business owner like man that's that's exhausting right so what are some of the benefits and problems associated with those things you know obviously I said what's the one thing that scares you the most about building a business offline you want to tell me what's one of the things that scares you the most oh my god cold calling that does still exist people still do that and I guess they I mean I, I guess they make money I, I don't know about you but I don't like getting a cold call or I don't like these calls now that are auto generated yeah it's the worst doing it or receiving it uh, yeah yeah people are not responding Val. people are not responding to this well have you gotten these automated ones let me see my phone happens to be right here because I was gonna role play later how to book a a, a speaking gig so it's like this you get this call and I'm like hi this is Mary and they're like hello I, I don't have a good connection oh my gosh just that's a hold on now. let me fix my connection and you're freaking holding on thinking holy shit this is a live person and then you realize yeah Jennifer people do this all the time right um, trying to explain the benefits in such a tiny space Ooh, all of that kind of stuff so like please just let, let's not cold call now saying that 
get ready because you're going to be cold calling to book yourself as a speaker. Oh, look how I kind of turned that around. Auto-generated ones. Don't you feel like you feel uh, it's insulting? It is. So the cold calling to get yourself booked here, I was just like, ew, cold calling, but yes, cold calling to get yourself booked. This is the good thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me I come up. <laughs> the great thing about you, there's a couple really great things about you booking yourself, getting yourself booked is when you're on the phone, you're talking to that speaker coordinator or the person who's booking it. They are thrilled to have a competent, articulate person wanting to give their audience, right? A fantastic presentation. Like they're thrilled. Some of my speaking, like I, I have a, I have something coming up in January. Hey, hey Kathy, I have something coming up in January and they're putting me up. They're taking care of all my expenses, blah, 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 blah. They're thrilled. And I promise you, you know, doesn't that make you want to bring it? I'm going to be bringing it. So <clears throat> when you do that talk, call it is most groups struggle to get good speakers right Jennifer's saying she's agreeing like hello they want good speakers so it's way easier than a regular cold call it's different it's easier because you're calling someone who's like like has their arms wide open please please somebody show up so there's a couple ways that this can happen. I'm going to t tell you how I do a f get free bookings, right? But there's a couple ways and I'm sure there's a, ones that I'm not mentioning, but what I believe, um, yeah, you're, right. You're cold calling and Dawn, I'm going to explain exactly how you're going to do that in a minute. So there's three kind of ways that you can speak, right? One is pay to play. And basically that means Say, for example, a guru in your industry has a large following or there is a, um, a big event and those events are paid for a lot of times, not just by the people who might be attending it, by the, but by speakers who pay to speak on their stage. And this is, can be a very lucrative if you are excellent. Let me really say this again. If you're excellent at closing a room, if you're excellent at being able to make conversions and conversions mean that you are able to say blah, 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 blah. And, and now what I'm selling, so to speak, of course we don't do it like that, but now what I'm selling is this. So if you're in a room of a hundred people, do you know whether or not you can close them on the spot? Maybe 25%, 30%. Then do you know what the ratio is? post talk. So for example, when I've taught, when I do my speaking gigs and I've never done the pay to play, you know, there is my conversion rate can easily be 40% in the moment. But then back to systems, right? We talked about referrals, but here's another system, your follow up system and how you're engaging with people. Uh, my cat's down here. One of my three black cats is deciding to come in. Hey buddy, no you can't have that. Um, at post, you know, my talk, it's way higher. So really know your numbers. And people don't know their numbers and this is one of the things that's driving me crazy. So it's pay to play. <clears throat> um, keynote, and of course, you know, you're paid as a keynote speaker, but then you're not really making the pitch. Then you're not really making it a big offer. And finally, these free talks. So let me ask you, what do you think the easiest thing to talk about is? What is the easiest thing for you to talk about? Thank you. Whoop, whoop. The easiest thing for you to talk about or what's, and let me rephrase that. What is your biggest concern about what to talk about if you're doing a live talk or any talk? What's your biggest concern? Okay. Well, I'm going to answer that question for you. Most people's biggest concern, of course, is oh, the new kitten. What the hell am I even going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? So let me tell you the easiest thing for you to talk about. And I love this. I love this. And the reason I love this is because I'm all about make doing repurpose, recycle, reuse. I'm all about multi-purposing your content. So the easiest thing to talk about is your offer or your program. The easiest thing to talk about is your program because see, whenever you're doing something, you want to make sure it ties back to ultimately what you're going to offer. 
And although I'm not going to be, I'm just, this is your free training. I'm not going to be hard pitching. Of course, there's a link that you can get on the phone with me. I mean, but the, I have nothing today that I'm going to be like, and, and here's my seven month program for, that's not going to happen today. But if you have, let's say you have a five week program, it's really easy to talk about those steps. Those, that's what you talk about. I want you to think about things logically. You know, I'm really big on, we need to remove the emotion from our business sometimes and think logically. So if you know you have a five week course or a six week course or whatever it is, you can actually take one of those points out of each week and that's part of your talk. That's all you have to do. It doesn't really have to be more complicated than that. There is kind of a flow on how you want to do the introduction, how you kind of want to set things up and how you want to do the transition to the offer. So it's not like, and I hope you all learned something. Now let me tell you what you can buy. You don't want it like that, but it doesn't have to be so scary. Now saying all that, you know, my, um, the coach that helped me build my business with speaking. I mean, she's masterful and brilliant. Kristen Thompson, shout out to you. Um, and there's definitely a flow to things, but that transition, even if doing a live stream like this or doing a telesummit or a call, uh, bye, yes, get the workbook, thanks. Um, and, and the video will be available, of course, the replay. Um, <clears throat> you know, the transition doesn't have to be so hard. So let's all take a deep breath and recognize, again, the three tenets of our business is market, sell, and deliver. And when you market effectively, it's really easy to sell and it's really easy to deliver because when you're marketing effectively, really you've got the audience of people who, who want what you have. So you don't have to do that hard selling, that mean selling. Thanks for the hearts, loves. I love that. So let's get right into, before we get off, it's about, uh, we'll, we'll talk for a few more minutes. Let me actually go through, oh, and the easiest way to title, you know, easiest thing to title your, your talk is the title of your package or program, for example, or a, or a little twist on it. Let me give you a very concrete example so you can understand exactly what I'm saying. So my product that I offer that is actually in kind of transition of expanding historically was called the Big Bold Life and Biz Plan. And so that has evolved, of course, as I've grown and I've made more money and I've worked with tons of more clients. And so it's evolved. But when I first started talking, I would say, you know, it's the big, bold life in this plan. And there's five things that we're going to talk about, which, of course, were bullet points out of each one of those modules. And it was like, what are the blind? And actually, some of these will be subsequent weeks here that we're going to be talking about. But like, what are your main blind spots? You know, how to, how do you find clients? Like all of these different five things. How do you have systems? How do you have mindset? How do you deal with profit? What's your money mindset? What's your money story? Like these, you know, these were the things. And if you feel like, oh my God, I, you know, I, I got myself booked, but they don't want that exactly. It's very easy to still pull content out and create what appears to be and is to a point, just a little twist on your regular, regular talk. For example, in January, I'm giving another, uh, uh, I'm giving a workshop and it's not all business owners. And so what they've asked me to do is really go into the psychology. So for those of you who don't know me, I have a history as a psychotherapist. I was a sales trainer. I'm a cognitive behaviorist. I'm a train, a uh, certified transformational coach. And so they wanted a lot more of the mindset because they don't want me talking all about, you know, business systems and developing a, you know, a big business. So the name, guess what I named the workshop, not the big, bold life and biz plan but I named it your big, bold life. So I'm going to be taking content that I already have. And of course, developing, I've developed some to tweak for their particular group. Um, and talk about that. How easy is that? Again, I want you to just to breathe this in. Our businesses are so much easier than we think. And I believe that thinking is 80, 90% of it. The mechanics of building the system or the business is fairly, I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't nuances. Don't get me wrong. I'm not minimizing it at all, but there are, uh, it, it doesn't have to be so hard. 
Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I'm almost 50. And you know, I grew up in that time where it was like hard work is a value. Like if you work hard, you know, you better work hard, all of those kind of things. But I'm letting you know that I, like it took me a long time to redo this in my brain, not to be in that posture of like, it better be hard and I've got to be crazy busy. And we're going to talk more about that in the subsequent weeks, this mindset stuff. But I wanted you to have something immediate that you could actually get on the phone and maybe book a call between now and next week. That's your homework assignment, by the way. So I know people's biggest fear around doing this activity is public speaking. They don't know what to offer and they don't know how to do a call. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to pretend that I'm calling and booking myself. Okay. So you can take notes and if you really want the exact script, I'm happy to send you the exact script. You can just, um, ping me back. Um, but it looks like this. First of all, this is a really critical piece, I believe. What are the three main things that you want to convey to the person, the speaker coordinator? There's three things that I teach. I make sure that I let her know or him know, and it's her really because I, I, you know, women are my primary group. Um, I let people, I let them know that, you know, Sally, I understand, you know, you're booking this and I want to let you know something that's really important for me to convey to you. It's three things. There's three things that I do with that audience because nothing worse than sitting at a chicken lunch and then having a crappy, boring speaker. So I make sure that I'm engaging. So I'm letting you know right now that I'm going to be asking questions. I want there to be engagement. If you're open to it, I'm going to give them maybe a, something to do to interact with one another, to support, you know, the community, your community, building your community. I'm going to be entertaining. I promise I'm not just going to sit there and just be like, hi, my name is Mary McNown and what we're going to do today. I want to be entertaining. And finally, I want to be educational. Hey, Kate, I want to be educational. I, I want to make sure that every single time I, uh, and have a talk that no matter what people walk away with action items, whether they ever work with me, whether the, I, they ever hire me or not. Um, I want to make sure. So sure. Of course you can ask me any, any question you want. I'm totally an open book. So this is how the call goes. Ready? So it's like ring, ring, ring. And then you're, you know, let's just say you get through the gatekeeper and you're finally talking to Sally Sue. Everybody, Sally Sue to me and be like, Hey, Sally, how are you? Hey, Sally Sue, this is Mary Bick. Now I'm calling because I understand that you are the speaker coordinator for Zim Zam Zoom group. Is that right? And she's going to say, well, of course, because I know who I'm talking to. And I'm going to say, is now a good time to chat with you? And she's going to say yes. And I'm going to say, so I'm calling you because my understanding is your audience of is, and I'm going to explain the audience like your audience is a group of business women who excel in whatever the tech industry or whatever it is for you. So I would say something like my understanding is, um, you've got a group of entrepreneurs. And so one of the things that I do is I've spoken all across the country. If you've spoken across the country or wherever you have input that I've spoken all across the country in front of female business owners and entrepreneurs. And I talk to them about how to have a big, um, I'll put this down now, how to have a big, bold life in business. Does this sound like something that would be of interest to your population or to your audience? And she would be like, Hmm, tell me a little bit more about this. And so I'll say, great, let me tell you what, what we would be doing is, and then I'm going to go through it. So the big bold life in biz plan is about helping women identify what their blind spots are that are keep holding them back. Um, under uncovering what may be a, a money issue. And let me tell you, Sally, every single time I give a talk, I give people a little quiz on their money. So they're going to know that day how they're doing with their money. So my, so I go through a couple more of these, right? I go, a couple more bullet points. And I said, and let me tell you three things that are really important for you to know about me. I want to make sure that when I'm standing in front of your audience, that you look like a rock star, that they're like, yay, Sally, thank you so much for bringing Mary. She was like, fantastic. That's my job to make you look good that they, you invited me and also to make sure that they're entertained. I don't want to be boring. Nothing's worse. I've been in an audience of boring talks. It's, it's horrible that they're educated no matter what, when they leave that room, whether they ever work with Mary Bicknell again, 
that they have something that is going to change their business and their life. And finally, that they're engaged, that I want them to be able to open up and feel free to be able to talk. <clears throat> So that's how I do the call. And then she's going to say something like, oh my God, that sounds fantastic. And I'm going to be like, I know. And then I say this to her. I want to let you know, Sally, that I'm not coming in. I, I won't be coming into your um, space and giving a hard pitch. But you know, what I have found is that after I'm done giving my talk, people have gotten so much out of it. They want a little bit more. So I'm going to be offering them the opportunity to get this workbook or whatever it is that I'm going to offer. Like, you know, I have a special program called, actually, I do have this FYI, if you want it. Um, I have this special free program for them called Bold Life, Big Money, Bold Life, Big Profit. And it's an hour long training and it's a workbook and they could kind of take this to the next step if they want to. Is that all right that I share that? What do you think she's going to say? Of course, she's going to say yes. So let me tell you, whenever you do a live talk, you want to walk out of there with people's names and sales and maybe referrals for another talk. Maybe someone in that audience is like, oh my God, she's great. She would be great at talking too, right? You never leave without getting people's names ever, or you've wasted your time. Why do I think that? Because hello, I've done that. I've like left and I'm like, crap. You know, are these, how are these people going to get a hold of me? Now, of course, I've given them a pamphlet or whatever, or notes or a workbook. Look, hello, demonstrate. I'm demonstrating to you what you can do. You can be like, here you go. Here's the workbook. Now, what do you notice at the bottom of my workbook, right? It's like, here's my website. Here's that. So you can give them something. Then back to the systems, which we will talk about in other trainings as we go forward. What is your follow-up system? Because let me tell you, how many times, and this is, oh, we're, we're, we're closing up here, it's about, it's 1031. How many times have you gone to a networking group or whatever, and you've someone's handed you a business card? How many times have you really done anything with that? I mean, let's be real. How many of you, let me say, like, hello, I see all you in here. How many of you have ever really followed up with a business card? Not very many people. I personally, I don't even have business cards. I haven't had business cards for Jesus, um, I don't know, a couple years. And the reason being is because my job is not to just pass out my card. Here, please call me here. I hope you call me here. You hope I... My job is to follow up with you. So I will take your card and I will follow up. But for most people, they don't do that. So don't rely on just like handing out your business card. Have a system where you can obtain their name and give them something back. It's very similar to what we do online. How many of you have opted in to get this workbook? It's not different. It's not any different. So I'm hopeful. I'm sure I'm not hopeful. I'm sure that, um, this was helpful to you as far as, and you can listen to that, how I did that call again, or if you want, just email me. I do have a whole training on, you know, a free training, a free training for you on the exact script. Um, and actually maybe I will just pop that out this afternoon um, and to all of you who have already signed up. And for those of you who are watching this later, just pop me an email. And it's so much easier than you think. Don't be nervous. You know why? Because you are the expert in front of the room. You are the giver in front of the room. Have fun with it. Be engaging. People are coming there to listen to you. That speaker coordinator would not have booked you um, uh, if she thought you sucked. And now, okay, there's a lot of people that suck out there and a lot of those speaker coordinators have booked sucky, crappy speakers. And you know why? It's because you haven't been calling getting yourself booked. So what's the final thing? I'm gonna give you a homework assignment and I'm gonna talk about what you need to know first. The main thing that you need to know first is who is your perfect ideal client. And when I think about my perfect ideal client, and I have had some of the most wonderful clients, hello, <laughs> some of the most brilliant clients. In fact, some of these women, they, they haven't, if I met them like out and about, I would be like kind of intimidated because they're so brilliant. Um, you really have to know who that is. 
And, and we can do a training on that. I have a really simple system on how do you figure out who your ideal client is. But I want you to, here's a, here's a tip. I want you to think about who you look forward to talking to. Like who gets you excited to talk to? If you had a lineup of a hundred of these women or customers and they were all waving their credit card, like what do they look like? Who are they? Because when you know that person, it's so fun and it's so easy and, and you could just talk for hours to an audience. Like I could keep going on and on and on here, but I'm respecting our time together. So this is your homework assignment. Are you ready? Oh my God, I want you to get yourself booked for one talk. So let me tell you, here's a little tip, where to find some talks, okay? Now Google's your best friend. I'm sorry there's not a directory with the like, there's, a, there's thousands of meetings going on all across the country, like right even this very moment. But let me, one of the things that you can put into Google, and you're really gonna wanna write this down, is um, it will say call for speakers. So if you put call for speakers in quotes, and then put whatever it is that you do. So let's say, for example, you are um, someone who teaches all about, you know, whatever it is, business or your chiropractor or, you know, you teach health or whatever your business is, you know, you're a realtor and you, whatever it is that you you have a talk on, you could say call for, so for me, what I would put in there is like call for speakers, call for speakers, women associations, business associations, boom. What's cool is what's going to come up is like people, they really put that out there. They put that out in the world for speakers. So that was something I discovered. And then there are different directories. Maybe you want to look up business associations, business directory, and then put it in your hometown. Business directory for Portland, Oregon, women owned business, Portland, Oregon. Then, you know, you're finding out where these people are, where they're, where they're meeting. And there you go. I'm getting ready to do a talk actually for women in construction. I didn't, you know, I have gotten clients of women in construction, brilliant women, really dynamic women too, because they're in an industry that's predominantly male. And so, um, they're go getters. And so that's always fun. So thanks. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. And I'm going to be sending out a link. It's actually going to be going, we're going to, instead of doing this live on my personal page now, we're going to take this over to my Facebook group. And that way, you know, it's not just mucking up my feed, right? Because we're also Facebook is about building personal relationships. So I don't want everything on my personal page just to be about business. So that'll be super easy for you to be able to find. So just sign up for that workbook. And before you know it, it'll be next week. Now, this is my gift to you. Are you ready? Every one of you who get yourself a new speaking gig, a new talk between now and next Thursday and you have to show up live for the training and you have to say, I did it. I got myself booked. I'm going to send you my personal calendar and I'm going to kind of walk through your talk with you. We'll get on the phone for a half hour and this will just be um, a gift to you that you took action and got yourself booked. And, um, I am really excited to see who's going to do that. I cannot wait. You can email me if you have any other questions or you definitely want that script in. Have a great day. I'm headed out. Let me, let me show you my yard. I'm headed out. Actually, my child and her friend are right down there. Ooh, it snowed in Portland, Oregon. Okay, go do it. Go build your own big, bold life and business. And remember... Business doesn't have to be hard. People are waiting for you and, and that special something that only you can provide. Only you. Bye now. Have a great day.